Hello ladies, thank you for joining me again for a new lesson. I've got one that's a little bit fun and uh, creative. I hope that you can maybe set some things aside and really focus in on this lesson if you're listening or watching. I'm so glad to see uh, that you've tuned in and that we're studying the Word of God together. We're um, eager to learn His Word and to grow. Let's pray before we start this study. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for, again, this time together. Lord, for the technology that is able to work for us to be able to see or hear someone even from a far distance or at another time. And I ask, Lord, with all that's going on, that you would help us to focus and listen on your word, that we would hear from you, that you would lead and guide us, and that uh, we'd be willing to do some things that are pointed out, Lord, that we may need to align a little bit closer to where you're at. I thank you for you and uh, all that you do each and every day for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I'm going to teach this, and I think many of you, <clears throat> or most, are listening rather than watching. And so uh, I recently was able to speak to some ladies on this topic, and I want to explain to you what I did. So again, if you're listening, it won't be any difference um, to watching. I'm not actually um, acting out what I'm about to say. But what I did was I was about to go up to speak, and I had a little microphone on, and uh, the woman in charge had already introduced me. And so what I did, instead of going straight to the little podium or platform where I was going to speak, is I went over to the corner to where I had already kind of set it up ahead of time. And I had, I think, four to five suitcases on wheels sitting there and some backpacks. And I also had a cane. And so I started to talk out as if I were going on a trip somewhere. And I said, um, I started, I would take one suitcase in one hand and get the other, try to double up. And I started to say, oh man, I wish someone were here to help me. I can't believe it. There's all these people around. No one's helping me. They see that I've got a cane. They see that I can't maybe walk and, you know, go as handle as much as everyone else. And no one's even offering to help me, man. This is such a chore. I can't believe it. I don't know if I'm going to make the plane. I've got a long way to walk. This is ridiculous. And then I walk up kind of a little bit behind the, the podium and I said, oh, hello, my name is Angie Christensen. I'd like to check in for flight 49. Oh, I know I've got, I'm a little bit late, but I hope that I can still make the plane. And uh, by the way, I've, I'm handicapped. And so I need you to maybe get, call and get me a cart or, or maybe even one of those little uh, golf carts that they ride and drive people up to the gate. I need some help. And oh, I know I've got a little bit more luggage than I should have. You know, I kind of needed everything that's packed. Could you let some of it slide or not charge me all the fees? I'd really appreciate it. Oh, I, you're so nice. I'm so thankful that you're here. And then with that, I paused and got into this lesson of baggage. And ladies, if you can imagine that scenario that I just described to you, you know, I'm struggling with all this baggage. Uh, and then inside, but maybe not out verbally, I'm just complaining that it's too heavy and it's too much and nobody's helping. But then as soon as I'm in front of someone, I'm a different person. Oh, hi. Thank you. Thank you. Could you check me into flight 49? Um, I can just put on a smile and I can be who everyone thinks I am on the outside. And it's interesting when we think of uh, baggage and luggage and things in life uh, that weigh us down. The Lord took me to Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, right at the, really the beginning, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, doth beset us. You know, I think of those luggages. So if I had one that was maybe medium size and tan, I would um, show that before you. And I would say, you know, maybe this particular piece of luggage would represent uh, my past, the path that I've chosen in life, decisions that I've made. And that's a weight that maybe I carry on, a baggage that I hold on to that I shouldn't or um, it's too much. Then I might show to you one that's uh, multicolored, 
uh, let's say purple and gray, and it's large, like it's really big that if I really, sometimes I think these luggage makers, they make them so big because they know that I'm going to fill it all the way. And then I'm going to make the airline, airline more money because it definitely would be overweight because it's so huge. So why do they make them that big, in, that big to begin with? Um, but a big one that's purple and gray, you might say, you know, Miss Angie, a piece of baggage that I carry and hold on to is the family that I was born into. I didn't ask for it. Um, maybe there's a lot, a lot of history or negativity. Uh, maybe not a Christian home. Sometimes it's a Christian home, but it's still not good. But that you're born into a piece of baggage that you are carrying that is too much. Then I might show to you just a small little black carry-on. Um, it's got some wheels, but it would definitely fit in the overhead uh, bin. That might be the generational sin that um, is besetting me, that it's gone generation after generation. Maybe it was not even taught to me, but it was in the family, and I have a temptation or a risk to walk right into that same sin, and I carry that as a weight. Another one might be a navy blue suitcase of medium size, no wheels, but a strap on it. Um, that could be my personal sin that something active that I deal with, that maybe people know about it, but maybe they don't, but it's a weight that I hold on to and that I carry another one for some of you that, uh, maybe are in ministry, a voluntary or, a, a ministry, uh, job, if you will. But, um, it's just the stress of ministry, trying to work with people, different personalities, trying to help someone's life, but maybe they don't want to the same help, if you will. That can definitely be a piece of baggage. Um, maybe it's the, the one you look at while I'm walking up to the airport, it's just a white plain piece of luggage. That's looks like there's no problem with it, but it still can be such a stress and a weight that we carry. Um, you could have one that's brown and it's health. You could have another one that's plaid and it's your finances. You could have one that's polka dot and it's your children. You could have a piece of baggage or even a laptop uh, bag that you're putting over your shoulder that are the relationships you're in. And maybe, maybe even as I'm describing all these pieces of suitcase uh, luggage baggage to you and I list these categories you can relate, but maybe already you thought, oh, she didn't mention mine. She didn't mention this one. She didn't mention, you know, and don't let that distract you because everyone's baggage looks different. Everyone, whatever is inside, everyone has, they, we have different. There might be some similarities, but everyone's shoes are different. Um, too often we are weighed down by things we were never meant to carry. Now, this is different if you've already watched or listened to the one about being preoccupied or even the recipe of, you know, things in my life. This, these are different. These are weights that often were given to me or I have facilitated that I'm carrying and it is too much. If you were charged, the, the Lord gave me this question and I don't like it. <laughs> if you were charged like luggage from an airline for every burden that you're carrying, what would your current fee be? You know, you go somewhere, oh, there's a $25 luggage fee, a $50, you know, what would your fee be for all the things that you shouldn't be carrying? But also, if you were told you were going to be charged for all those burdens, which ones would you suddenly decide to set down and not carry? It's interesting. If I were charged for something, it could really change which burdens I carry. You know, the one about that is not so big. I think I'll let that one down. I just, oh, I don't want to carry it and I don't want the charge. But then there still might be one or two that you just aren't willing to even part with that you're saying, this one's too personal. This one has too much of a history. It's too deep. I can't let anyone else carry it because even though I don't like it, I don't want anyone else either to know about it or I don't think they could even handle it. And when we're doing those things, ladies, we're taking matters into our own hands. I want to um, show you a couple scriptures. Proverbs 11 verse one, it says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Another one, Proverbs 20, 23 says diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord. 
and a false balance is not good. So back in the Bible age, but even all the way up into the 1800s and uh, maybe the 19s, and I don't know, there might even be some countries that are pretty primitive that might still do this, but for much of history, uh, the use of a scale has been very, very important. The kind that maybe has a post in the middle and a wire or chains to either side which, with two plates or flat surfaces upon which we would put maybe the one item that's to be bought or sold on one side. Um, for instance, if someone were to buy an apple or were selling um, some eggs, they would place it on one side. On the other side, the merchant would place some weights um, pieces of metal. Sometimes it was actually pieces of money. And what they would do is see what the value of that item was to make it what was supposed to be fair. But was what is a very, very common practice for much of history was that merchants would have pockets and they would have two different ones that they would have one bag of weights in the one pocket and a different bag of weights in the other pocket and they would be different measurements. If you put both bags up on the scale, they would not be equal. And so what they would do is if it were someone that they liked, a family member, um, someone that they just um, had a relationship with that was important, they would put the weights up on the scale that were in the favor of that customer. But if you were a stranger, if you were definitely someone they didn't like, sometimes law enforcement or of a government job, they would put the weights up there that were fair to the merchant and not the customer. And that's what the Lord is describing here. It was very, very well known. And it said that a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. You know, God loves what is fair. God loves what is truthful and honest and right. And ladies often will take a weight on, again, that we were never meant to carry. And we'll tell someone it's one way, when really that's not the whole truth. We present it one way to one person and then we present it another way to another person. Maybe ever talking about the same weight that we were never meant to carry. Uh, I love a song that was sung at our uh, church many years ago by a pastor and I don't know that I'll read it all, but the, the title of it is, Why Should I Worry? Why Should I Fear? And it says, Out on the water, the storm's raging high. The waters around them troubled their mind. With fear in their heart, they thought they might die. They failed to remember the master was nigh. <clears throat> he spoke the word, the winds all stood still. Even the waters, they obeyed his will. He calmed their storms just like he will mine. If I'll just remember, he lives deep inside. Then the chorus says, why should I worry? Why should I fear? That very same Jesus, he is always so near. He lives in my heart. He hears when I cry. So I'll call on the master till the storm passes by. Maybe you've heard this song and you're already singing it in your head. This song has meant so much to me. It has spoken to my heart in times of need and in times of just rejoicing in a season of good. But it has gotten to my heart. Sometimes there's songs based on the scripture on the Lord that do that to you. Ladies, cherish those. Play them over and over again. Learn them. Even if you don't have the best singing voice, sing out to God. I'm going to keep reading the lyrics. The next verse says, I read in the Bible how he walked with them, brought light to their darkness when the way grew dim. How great it would be to have his step leading mine, to walk with the master all of the time. But when trouble came, death was so nigh, they searched for the master, hoping he'd get there on time. So when I'm in trouble, my body's in pain, all I have to do is call on his name. Ladies, it's true. That's all we have to do. Our baggage is heavy. It can weigh us down so much that it could be the undoing of us. If I were to go to a body of water, a lake, a river, the ocean, with all of those baggage pieces that I explained to you, and I'm holding on to them, I've got them on one arm, and I've got another one strapped onto me, a backpack, 
and I enter the water, if you were from the side, you would think she is foolish. What is she doing? It's going to make her sink. And that's what it does to us in life. Our baggage makes us sink as if we're carrying all these items in water. Um, you know, your attitude makes a difference. Listen to this person called named Norman Cousins. He was hospitalized with a rare crippling form of arthritis. When he was diagnosed, they told him it was incurable. So Cousins checked out of the hospital himself, aware of the harmful effects that negative emotions can have on the body. He reasoned that maybe the reverse was true. So he borrowed a movie projector and prescribed his own treatment, consi consisting of Marx Brothers films and old candid camera reruns. It didn't take long for him to discover that 10 minutes of laughter provided him two hours of pain-free sleep. Amazingly, his debilitating disease was eventually reversed. After the account of this victory had appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine, Cousins received more than 3,000 letters from appreciative physicians throughout the world. Um, you know, when was the last time you or I personally took the time to ask God what you should be carrying as far as burdens and trials and things that weigh you down? You cannot help carry someone else's burdens if you are overburdened with your own. You know, we can't, as you hear, like on an airplane, you can't help the person next to you, a child or someone with a physical ailment with their oxygen in case of emergency, if you first don't put on oxygen and then you help them. Um, you know, to lighten your load, I, I um, come up, came up with a few points here. Number one, and they're pretty simple, things that aren't new to you, but things that we need reminded of. Number one, without fail, pray. It's very simple, ladies. First Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Uh, communication with God all throughout the day is absolutely essential. Baggage requires pit stops along the way to evaluate the handling. Once we send that baggage back with the airline um, counter worker and it goes on that conveyor belt, we don't see all the different places it goes. Maybe the scans that the little tag is... Um, taken as they go before it gets on the plane and then it's offloaded and gets back to the um, you know, uh, baggage claim center. We need the same thing. I have a trial or a burden, a baggage that I'm carrying. I might give it to God, then I take it back. I might cast it before the Lord and then I take it back. I need regular moments where I check in with God and say, God, I think I'm, I picked this one up again. I'm giving it to you. We need regular talk and communication with the Lord on what you're going through. Sometimes we often tell others and we say we believe that God can do anything, but we think it's for their life and not our own. Number two on how to lighten your load, surrender yourself. Romans 6.13 says, Neither yield ye yourself members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Lady surrender is not a one-time event or time at the altar or decision that you make. It's a way of life. We have to surrender to the Lord really every day. And sometimes it's moment by moment throughout that day. Um, you know, surrendering your burden is best done after you make it start with personal surrender. So I give my burden to God, but I didn't give myself to God. Um, surrendering to God will bring you peace, true peace that lasts. Psalm 31, 7 says, I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. Listen to a very, very interesting place that I found uh, online. Um, it's called the UBC. It's very important for one reason. So on average in 2021, there, was, there were more than 7,000 pieces of unclaimed baggage items per week globally. And I think that number was actually down because less people were traveling because of the COVID restrictions. So this UBC is actually named the Unclaimed Baggage Center. It's a giant store in Alabama, Scottsboro, if you're interested, that sells lost or unclaimed luggage to strangers. 
and it's dubbed the lost luggage capital of the world. Now that's one place I would not want to work. That would um, be frustrating to me to go through all those items. They said the, the item, the area that has one of the largest displays besides clothes are the electronics. There are so many headphones and iPads and devices that are left um, unclaimed, that were never claimed, that were left on a plane or left at the luggage center. You know, that's wonderful. You know, someone is able to go without it and didn't Maybe it was something they didn't want, they got rid of, but yet often it's something valuable. And those are the ones that are most precious is that when we give something to God that really was uh, impactful on our life, probably in a negative way, that it becomes so personal, we don't want to give it up. But to know that you can give it to a Savior that gave his life up for you can give you healing and peace like you never knew before. Uh, Proverbs 16, 11 says a just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of his, ba- of the bag are his work. Ladies, if we use God's scale and his weights and his judgments with all this baggage that we're carrying, we could get a whole lot farther and have more energy and a better spirit to deal with the everyday today things that come our way. So we're going to pause right there and you'll have to come back next week for part two, but don't miss it because I'm going to finish the points. I'm also going to work down, uh, break down the word baggage, um, and an acronym to help us understand better what it does to us. So I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.